Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Yes, I am back. I still have a little bit of a nasally voice. Uh, last week, I was really no shape to give a Friday Reflection. Uh, I was still working through a cold, and now I'm in the very last part of it. Uh, but thank God I was able to do the, the, the Christmas Masses, which was wonderful. And I was so, um, what's the word, joy-filled at the number of people that were there. Uh, it was amazing. The four o'clock mass in particular was packed to the gills. The, the narthex was full. The, the outside was even full in the sense there's people standing outside. The hallway that goes up our ramp towards the school, that area was also uh, taken up with lots of people I hear for us to gather before mass starts. Normally we're in the narthex, that's myself and the team that is the Eucharistic ministers, readers, things like that. And we couldn't do that because there was, it was just wall to wall people there. And that was a wonderful problem, you know, a wonderful problem. So we offered our prayer in the sacristy. And it was wonderful, kind of a close-knit thing, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. And, and it makes sense. It makes sense that it would be a time of excitement because that is a time where one of the greatest miracles next to creation occurred, right? That is that God humbled himself to become human in the person of Jesus. And because of what he did, he came to save us. The way he decided to do that is, um, well, it's beyond explanation other than it is the most amazing approach to loving. It is by giving oneself away, not in a half-parted way, in a half-baked way, but full on, body and soul. And that's what Jesus did for us. He gave himself away to us to live like us. And that's what we celebrate. So it's still Christmas. My lights are still up. In fact, I'm just looking at the Christmas tree thinking, I'm going to enjoy this until the very last day of Christmas. The Christmas lights outside are still up. And I noticed that not all of them are working like they did when, when, I, when I first put them up. That uh, The weather, the rain finally has taken its toll on some of it. And I'm like, well, okay, well, you know. They are things and they diminish. I call it entropy and gravity, and they're made by human beings, et cetera, that just doesn't, they don't last, right? But the Christmas season isn't over. The question I'd like to ask you, here's a quiz, when does it end? Now I've asked this question many times, and there was even a little meme on the internet on Facebook that said, keep calm and know that it's still Christmas until Epiphany. But the problem is Epiphany is not the end of Christmas. Well, the next feast day is, and that is the baptism of the Lord. So that's going to be for us Monday this year. I think it was also Monday last year, uh, or close to that anyway. So this time, if you have your, your decorations up, I want to encourage you. If you still have them up, keep them up until the actual last day. In fact, the baptism of the Lord is still Christmas, and at that very next day, the Tuesday is the Tuesday of the first week of ordinary time. So, okay, then turn them off then and start taking them down. And that's, you're good to go. You're, you've done your job. You've celebrated Christmas in the kind of traditional way a lot of people think. Good for you, awesome. But it's also a time that is the new year. People like to make New Year's resolutions. And I'd like to offer one for you to think about. We're coming up on Epiphany. That's, that's this coming weekend. So Epiphany, and what does it mean? Epiphany it means the revealing, or a revealing, or a revelation. And what's being revealed? A light unto the nations. Jesus himself. The Magi are coming. They saw a star, or something that was akin to a star. They saw this thing, and they knew it was coming, and they were able to follow that to the place where the babe Jesus lay. Now, historians have actually thought that actually this is not necessarily a babe, it's a child. The, the text actually gives that away, that it's a child. This means that Jesus could have been actually more than a year or two old even at this point. So be aware of that. So we kind of like to keep the little baby in our crest jeans and the, little, the manger the, and the magi coming. Uh, it's possible and very likely that Jesus was not an infant at this point but a young child, because that's what the child, that's what it says. Anyhow, be mindful of that. Nonetheless, what is it that maybe could be a resolution for you? 
What, in fact, maybe, might I recommend that it would be that God would reveal himself more to you and to me in this next year, that we would be open to the gift of the Holy Spirit, that God would live more deeply in us, that we would see him as a light amidst the difficulties of our lives, that we would turn to him when things are going, going wrong or we're struggling with sin or death has occurred in our lives, that we would turn to him, recognizing that he is the light that will never fade and that Jesus, who is the salvation of humanity, will save those, including us, in these dark times that we may experience in this coming year. It's 2024. It's hard to even say that, 2024. Have you written any checks or signed anything that says 2024 or, or requires you to do so? I've done that and I haven't made the mistake yet. I'm, you get the habit, 2023, now it's 2024. Wonder what wonderful things are gonna happen this year. There will be difficulties, absolutely, but there will be joyful things. What will you allow to dominate? Because this is also a choice we need to make. Will we make a choice to live in the darkness, even though it comes our way, and let that dominate and have the narrative? Or will we live in the light knowing that God has overcome the darkness? Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and he still shines. He is still alive, and he is still active in our lives. All we need to do is let him in, to allow him to transform us, to continually convert us, so that we will be the saints he's calling us to be, to be the best version of ourselves. That means where we are today, hopefully next year we will be different, more holy, more humble, more alive, more loving and compassionate. These are all things I hope for myself and I hope them for you too. Well, this weekend we do have the celebration of Epiphany and we have our big Epiphany celebration. I hope you can come, it'll be after the 1115 Mass so that means around 12.15, 12.30. Uh, if you come at 12, Mass will probably be near over, but um, it's a wonderful time to celebrate the light of Christ in our midst, in our hearts, together as a community. You know, what? one thing that really struck out is the number of people that came to Mass was a sign of life. Not like, where have you been all these other times? But no. It was how wonderful it was to have everybody there and that they shared in the joy that we celebrate weekly. This weekend, Deacon Brett is up on the docket for preaching, though he is a little bit sick. Now, we both had the cold, mind you that, and you can probably still hear it in my voice. It's a little bit nasally, but his has actually taken a little bit worse toll for his voice. He was barely speaking last time I talked to him. Uh, yeah, that would be today's Thursday. I'm recording this Wednesday evening. Uh, and so we're prepared. If he can't, I'll go ahead and preach. Uh, but pray for him. Pray that he'll have a voice that he can do that. But if he can't, also the wisdom that we would shift gears and I would be able to offer a homily that would be uh, in, encouraging, uh, maybe challenging, but uh, driving us closer to our Lord Jesus, who is the light of the world, that he would reveal himself to us like the Magi who are on a quest. May this year then be a quest for you, that the light of Christ in your life will help draw you closer to him. Do not be afraid. He only wants to change you completely so that you would be an amazing person that you would want to be with, that you're not today, a person that is loving and compassionate better than you are now, someone who's a passionate and compassionate person in Christ that in some ways you might not be today. He can do these things. He can change our hearts. Let's pray that that light who is Christ will do that. And I'll see you this weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.